in this section we'll talk about the other two categories of lipids the second category was conjugated lipids in which along with lipid there is something else which is attached to it and the third category which is again a very important category which is called derived lipids so we'll discuss these two now conjugated as we said there is something else along with the lipid part now depending upon what is that something else the name would be given to it so for example if there is phosphoric acid or a phosphate group attached then we would call it phospholipid one example of phospholipid is lecithin but what exactly is present in this there is a base an alcohol fatty acid and attached to it is phosphoric acid or the phosphate group if you are able to recall when we were talking about monoglyceride diglyceride and triglyceride fats we made the fatty substance like this or the fat molecule this round structure was glycerol and these two tail like things were fatty acids and we said attached to such a diglyceride fat is this phosphoric acid and this becomes our phospholipid and these are the ones which are found in plasma membrane so this is again a simple fat that is glycerol and fatty acid but to uh, to this part is attached phosphate group so we call it phospholipid and this is the important example of this phospholipid now the second example glycolipids glycolipids would have carbohydrate plus lipids and these are found on plasma membrane on plasma membrane there is something called glycocalyx this glycocalyx has two parts one is this one now to just have that recap when we make the plasma membrane structure that is the one which was given by singer and nicolson that is fluid mosaic model these are the proteins extrinsic protein and here is the intrinsic protein attached to the protein part is an oligosaccharide we call it glycoprotein and attached to lipid is also an oligosaccharide that is called glycolipid so this one where there is an oligosaccharide attached to this phospholipid molecule we call it glycolipid these two things together make the outer layer which is called glycocalyx so this is basically protective in function so its role is protection the third one of conjugated protein we can take sphingolipids in this case attached to the lipid is a nitrogen base and some of the sphingolipids are found in the plasma membrane and also in the nervous tissue the fourth one is when a protein is attached to lipid then that is known as lipoprotein so here as the name tells us lipo for lipid and protein is the protein so whenever there is something else attached to a lipid we get conjugated lipids these are some examples of conjugated lipids now coming to derived lipids in derived lipids we have two main categories one is known as sterols or they are also called steroid alcohol and the other category is of terpenes now in this sterol part they are all derived lipid that means there is some basic structure and uh, associated with it there is something else also now these sterols they can be of plant origin that means they are found in plants so when they are of plant origin we call them phytosterols 
phytosterols. Phyto is for plant. There are two examples that we can take here. Stigma sterol and cetosterol. Stigma sterol is obtained from soya bean and it is also used to obtain progesterone. So it can be converted to progesterone. And cetosterol is obtained from wheat germ oil. As they have plant origin, we call them phytosterol. The other category, if they are obtained from fungus, then they are called ergosterol. That is from fungi. And ergosterol is found in the plasma membrane of fungi. So this is again a protective layer. And the third one, they are obtained from animals. So they are called zoosterols. And the most important zoosterol is cholesterol. Cholesterol is called cholesterol because its name has been derived from the uh, part from where it was extracted. It was obtained from gallstone. So extracted from gallstone and that is why it is called cholesterol. Pure cholesterol is a white crystalline substance. White crystalline substance. Its melting point, melting point is 149 degree Celsius to 150 degree Celsius. And it acts as an insulator. It's a bad conductor. So, acts as insulator. So, these are the properties of cholesterol. Now, there are few more derivatives of sterols which we would take up now. After this, we can take the fourth one as bile acids. They also come in the same category bile acids. For example, cholic acid, deoxycholic acid and third is chinodeoxycholic acid. They are called derivatives of sterols. So they are bile acids. The fifth category that we can take off is of another important substance which we call steroid hormones and these hormones include progesterone, testosterone. These sex hormones basically they are steroid even estrogen these are all steroid hormones. Now, whenever we are talking of sterol, we have to remember one thing. We are using a term derived. All these sterols, they are derived from. So here, this is a special thing. They are derived from a four ring structure, a four ring compound. And this compound is known as Phenanthrene. This phenanthrene is the basic skeleton and associated with that there can be other things. Now this phenanthrene it has three six membered ring and one five membered ring. That's how these four rings are formed. Let me change it. This is the three six member and one five member ring. That means six member is hexagonal, five member is pentagonal. So, this structure that is the phenanthrene, this is an important term. 
and all the sterols they are derived from this and when we have all these various examples the skeleton remains the same other than the skeleton there can be other things one more category in which we can add or we can have in this steroid part is adrenal corticoids. So these corticoids, that means from adrenal cortex, the hormones which are re released, they are also in the category of steroids. One more, again it is a derived thing, vitamin D. Now, whenever we talk of vitamin D, we say that it can be synthesized in our body using cholesterol. So, cholesterol acts as a raw material and then it gets converted into vitamin D. Cholesterol is the most important and the most talked about sterol or steroid. It is very, very important in our body because it acts raw, as raw material for these steroid hormones as well as for this vitamin D synthesis. Secondly, it is present in our plasma membrane also. It is in plasma membrane and it provides strength to plasma membrane. Provides strength to plasma membrane. So it is very, very important. But it is also said or believed that excess of cholesterol has a tendency to get deposited in the blood vessels. Recent research is talking about that this cholesterol doesn't get deposited in the blood vessel. It is some other kind of fat. So we are not very sure whether that thing is correct or not. But recent research has claimed that there is nothing called bad cholesterol. On the contrary, they are saying that you need cholesterol and if you stop taking cholesterol from the sources, your liver has to exert more to synthesize it. But till we get a confirmation uh, from all uh, research institutes and it is included in our syllabus, we will consider as good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. So this is about the recent uh, studies. But cholesterol is very, very important for our body. Now, we will talk about the last category that is terpenes. These terpenes, they are derivatives of a 5-carbon compound which is known as isoprene. So, this is the, again, skeleton part. Now, from isoprene, there are various types of substances which are obtained. So, we can call them isoprene derivatives. For example, a natural rubber. Natural rubber is actually polyterpene. So, how do we get terpenes? Terpenes are obtained from this isoprene. And if there are polyterpenes together, then we get the natural rubber. So it is called polyterpene. Another uh, terpene which we normally talk or terpene derivative. Second one, vitamin A. Third, carot carot carotenoids. These are the pigments and they are derivatives of these isoprene. Now these terpenes have a characteristic thing. They are responsible for imparting a specific odor to certain things. They impart specific odor to substances like camphor, eucalyptus oil, menthol, these substances, they have their characteristic uh, odor or aroma and that characteristic odor is due to presence of a specific type of terpene. So these are all terpenes. The skeleton remains as isoprene. So with this, our complete classification of lipids is done. We have seen three categories, simple lipids, 
conjugated lipids and derived lipids. In derived, we have talked of sterols as well as of terpenes. In the next segment, now we will start with the nucleotides and then nucleic acids.